Welcome to Hollywood Hoops Laid Back Reaction. I'm Josh Martin of Lonzo Wire. He's Eric Pincus of Basketball Insiders and Bleacher Report. It's been a little bit of time here, Eric, since we've done one of these videos, but I think last night's game on Thursday night uh, between the Lakers and the Pelicans, 128 to 125, the Pelicans come out on top. I think that whole game really merits some extra discussion from us, especially when you look at Lonzo Ball's shooting. You know, he had a, another bad game, two out of 15 from the field, one out of 12 from three point range. He had four really good looks from three point <laughs> range over the last five minutes of that game as the Lakers saw their double digit lead salt away. Uh, what did you see from Lonzo in that game? Uh, good, bad, and ugly, I suppose. Well, I mean, you're still getting the good in the sense that um, he's being what he is, which is uh, just a really good distributor of the ball, uh, somebody who's a real disruptor defensively. He gets his rebounds, he gets his assists, his deflections, his steals, and he's showing that he could be potentially an elite defender at that position. Uh, but right now, I think when he, when he's open, when he's not open, when he has the ball in his hands, you can see, at least I can see, he's struggling. He's struggling mentally to um, grasp that moment. Now, you might remember Kobe Bryant shooting a couple air balls or, or so against the Utah Jazz in the playoffs. And there's a point where you're a young player and you have to learn. And Lonzo's at that point, teams have adjusted to him. They're not just giving him these wide open looks, although he was open for a lot of those and he had some key shots that he could have hit that would have changed that game. And the Pelicans were just happy to give it to him. And he just couldn't get out of whatever hole he was in. There's a point where you're missing shots because your form, because of that is also a point where you're just down on your luck, you're down on yourself, and that's what it seems to me is going on. I, I don't think he has that confidence in his shot right now, so that's something they're going to have to build back up. It's going to take a minute, uh, but it's been pretty ugly lately. Yeah, I think that's, you hit the nail right on the head there, Eric, that I think it started as more of a physical thing, and now it's gone into the mental range, because he was on a good run there for, for a time. There's a, a great tweet from Justin Russo on Twitter last night saying that the first 24 games, Lonzo shot 24.3% from three. Not good, obviously. But then the following 17 games, he shot 44% from three on 109 attempts. Very good. His last eight games, 18% on 61 attempts, including seven of 48 over his last seven games. He hasn't made more than one three in any of those seven games. And it, it's really no coincidence that you go back to the the previous point where it was the last before those last seven games he had that game against the san antonio spurs what seemed like the real coming out party for his shot where he hit those three huge threes down the stretch and ever since then he struggled and you know pete zayas our friend over at laker film room did a great breakdown of this great breakdown video you can find it on youtube i did a post about it for lonzo wire as well where he pointed out that since then, teams have been defending him differently. Whereas before, they were going under they were going under screens when he was running in pick and roll. Now they're chasing him over. They're closing out on him harder. And I think it's, it's rattled him a little bit. At least physically, he's had to adjust to that. And he's, had, he's missed shots in that adjustment. I think that's gotten into his head. So, yeah. look, we've seen Lonzo hit shots before. We've seen rookies struggle before. I think this is just another phase for Lonzo. As you said, the league has adjusted to him. It's his job now to adjust to their adjustments. And eventually, this is going to really be telling whether Lonzo becomes a star is whether he goes from reading and reacting to dictating the action. That's going to happen. We're going to, that will be told years down the line probably. But for now, I think it's just a matter of him getting comfortable with what the league is doing. And I think ultimately this will make him better if he's able to get through it mentally. Yeah, and, and he will. Now, I don't know if he'll ever be a great shooter or where the where's that point where it settles. Was he as good as he was that middle stretch? Is he as bad as he was as he's playing right now? I don't know where he'll end up. I do know that he'll be better than he is right now. He'll find uh, over the summer more strength, more confidence, just more experience. And, and this, is, this is what all young players go through. It's very rare when you have someone like LeBron come in, but even LeBron, took a little while till he became truly a guy who could take his team to the finals every year. So, and I'm not saying that Lonzo is Kobe and I'm not saying LeBron is, that Lonzo is LeBron, right? He's who he is and maybe he's gonna be a Rajon Rondo and that may be the peak, maybe a Ricky Rubio. 
Uh, both very good players. Rondo a champion. Uh, Rubio's having a great year with Utah. Uh, but even Rubio's had even stretches of this year where he was almost absent and invisible uh, for Utah. And then when he killed it, Utah went on these great runs. So uh, we'll see who Lonzo Ball is, but we're not going to really know that when he's 20 years old. We're really going to know more when he's 24, 25, 26, when he starts to get into that meat of his prime. Maybe he develops quickly, but it may take some years. And that's, that's, that's the problem with drafting 20-year-old, 19-year-old kids. Yeah. It takes some time for them to become who they are going to be. Yeah, I would say this, that if there's anything encouraging, it's that he hasn't stopped shooting. You know, he's not Rubio and Rondo in the sense that he's going to shy away from taking shots. Now, he has shied away from driving in, and I think that will change over time as his body develops, as he gets more comfortable finishing, as he works on finishing, because he's not been good in that department. He's shooting under 50% within three feet of the rim, which is uh, very poor for an NBA player. But I think that will improve, and as that improves... You'll see that when he needs to get himself going, he won't just have to settle for a jumper. He can drive in and get himself a shot. And just seeing it go in will make a big difference. But it'll also help, at least for now, that he, he has guys. It helps that he has guys to pass to. Great yeah, scorers, Julius Randle, Kyle Kuzma, uh, Brooke Lopez, Contavious Caldwell Pope, guys that can hit shots. And the Lakers just signed a guy who they've had on the roster for a little bit for the rest of the season, a guy who's proven to be – a pretty darn good shooter himself. Eric, give us some details on that. Well, they, they re-signed Travis Ware, uh, whose two 10-day contracts expired. And, and actually, I've been most impressed by Travis's defense because, you know, we're both Bruins. The guy's always been a shooter, but someone who hasn't been really a solid defender. And, you know, the Lakers have been struggling defensively. I think that's where they miss Brandon Ingram and Josh Hart the most. Uh, KCP shooting well. Other players are shooting well. Lakers are putting up the points, but where they're really struggling is on the defensive end. And so Travis has come in. Uh, as really, he's not a rookie. He, he had a year in New York, but he's he's spent a lot of time with the South Bay Lakers slash defenders and has gotten a lot better. So they sign him to the rest of the year for the rest of the year. And uh, some people might say, well, why didn't they sign him for a multi-year? That's usually what teams do at this point. You find someone you like, you sign him to a two-year deal. The second year, which would be 18-19, would be non-guaranteed. But uh, I, I argued and uh, suggested, at least in, in writing and conversation, uh, that they sign him just to the rest of the year because you don't want to end up in a David Nwaba situation, right? Same thing where Nwaba, they had him on, on 10 days, signed him to a two-year, and then when they needed that extra cap space for KCP, now we could debate whether they needed that extra space or not, but they felt they did. They waived him, hoping that he would clear waivers so that they could re-sign him. Uh, the, the Chicago Bulls picked him up off waivers. He's been very solid for them. Uh, and in the case of Travis Ware, you sign him to a rest of your contract, you can give him a qualifying offer in June to make him restricted, you can go about your business just by making him restricted. No one's going to be offering him big money, right? He's not going to get an offer sheet. He's still <clears throat> a fringe player. But what you can do is you can negotiate with him a new deal, right? And then what you do is you renounce him. You, you actually withdraw your qualifying offer. He's unrestricted. Then you renounce him, but you already have a deal in place. Then you go and maximize your cap room so he's not on your books anymore. You go ahead and you get whoever it is you're going to get. Obviously, we all know the Lakers want LeBron and Paul George. So if they hit their grand slam, after you do that, then you can re-sign uh, Travis Ware to a two-year deal at that point, at the minimum, when you're already over the cap. So it's a, just a small way of saving money. I thought it made a lot more sense rather than a uh, two-year deal because then you have to waive him to get him off your books. Then someone else can claim him. Maybe he doesn't get claimed. Maybe he does. I don't think the Lakers expected when they signed Nwaba that he would be someone who would be claimed. But, you know, I, I, I always liked Nwaba, even when he started in the Defenders. And uh, it's it's one player they let get away that they shouldn't have. So I'm not sure if where will have that impact, but they, they followed that logic. And I, I think that was a, a smart move looking ahead. Yeah, it, it seems like it. And Travis has proven himself. You know, we've seen his ability to shoot has been great. His defense has been uh, a pleasant surprise, to be sure, smart player. Uh, well coached, coming out of UCLA, coming out of uh, modern day high school, I believe, down in Orange County. So uh, we'll see him stick around for a little bit here, at least for the next handful of games. The Lakers uh, are coming up on the end of their season, another two and a half weeks. Same for the rest of the league. Um, but before then, we'll be back with you another edition, back with you with another edition of Hollywood Hoops Laid Back Reaction. Thank you for joining us. He's Eric Pincus 
of Basketball Insiders and Bleacher Report. I'm Josh Martin of Lonzo Wire. Be sure to catch our podcast, uh, Hollywood Hoops, wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Megaphone, AlmightyBaller.com, CLNSMedia.com, and every Wednesday, uh, 4 to 5 p.m. Pacific time on Nothing But Net on Dash Radio. And if you're uh, hoping to... If, you, if you're a sponsor looking for somewhere to, to advertise, uh, please feel free to reach out to Eric and I and Hollywood Hoops, and we're always on the lookout. So thanks again for joining us for this edition of Hollywood Hoops, Laid Back Reaction. He's on his way, going to Hollywood, he's busting into Hollywood.